There is no doubt that Starship will be bigger and more powerful in the future. To achieve these spectacular launches, Starship will undoubtedly need a more robust launch platform than anything it currently has. That's when we talk about the launch system, the second Starship launch tower that SpaceX is constructing. Unlike the old launch tower, the new launch tower at Starbase has been upgraded from the foundation stage, promising to create a much more solid structure. So, how has SpaceX built the foundation of the second launch tower? Let's explore this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. First, we gotta thank Benedict3D for helping us better understand how all these components are assembled for the second launch tower foundation. Support him by following Benedict's X page to keep him motivated to uncover more awesome content like this. It all begins with the drilling of 133 small holes, each 32 meters deep. These holes will be arranged in a symmetrical square pattern. After drilling, concrete will be pumped into them. Immediately after pumping the concrete, the next step is to place the rebar cage. This must be done while the concrete is still in a liquid state and not yet hardened. Then, a thin bonding layer will be poured over the structure to facilitate the subsequent work. At the base of the vertical rebar bars, small concrete blocks will be added to reinforce the piles, preventing them from tilting or bending. This is also when the rebar mesh will be placed into the previous structure. According to the image, there are two such layers. One layer of steels on the bottom placed through the vertical steel bars and supported by the concrete blocks at the base of the steel columns. The horizontal steel bars will be added around the previous bundle of steel bars, creating a cohesive and sturdy structure. Once this is completed, the surrounding wall will be fully enclosed. At this point, a component called the embedded portion will be placed on top of the steel frame. This part will be square-shaped. These are the points where the tower legs will be placed, stacked and connected to the underlying structure. Currently, the four corner legs of the tower have begun to be raised and installed. The tower's height will rapidly increase. SpaceX will use a giant crane to stack the segments of the second tower. We won't have to wait much longer for its arrival. These details can be considered innovations and upgrades in the construction of the second launch tower at Starbase. Compared to past projects, it's much more complex, showcasing meticulousness and a focus on ensuring a solid foundation. Moreover, it also signals a more robust and massive upper infrastructure than ever before. If SpaceX's work proceeds quickly and smoothly, the second launch tower could become operational by early 2024. By then, the launch tower will be fully capable of performing its launch and catch missions. Alternatively, it could be used as a dedicated launch tower or a dedicated catch tower as outlined in the environmental impact statement recently released by the FAA. If that happens, perhaps the first Starship launch tower will handle catching duties while the second tower will take on the task of launching all the Starship variants. Why is this the case? We cannot deny that from the outset, the second launch tower has had structural changes in its foundation, which likely allow for changes in both height and durability. Meanwhile, SpaceX is developing larger variants of Starship, such as the V-2 and even the V-3 in the future, which will require a larger launch tower to withstand the thrust power during the liftoff of these massive Starship versions. In contrast, during landing, they will use fewer engines with less thrust to allow the rocket to slow down and hover, which can be managed by the initial Starship launch tower without causing significant damage. The first launch tower at Starbase is set to perform the catch mission in the upcoming flight. Notably, as Elon recently hinted on X, they're aiming to try this in late July. This is definitely an event to look forward to. So how will it happen? Well, to be honest, it's going to differ from what we previously thought. The booster will come back. It'll have an impact point that's out to sea, so it'll have to steer itself towards the tower with the catch arms, Elon Musk said. After around three minutes of flight, the booster will separate from the upper stage. In previous missions, it took about four more minutes for the booster to land in the ocean. However, this upcoming flight will have the booster performance extended journey to make its way back to the Starbase launch site. Including other maneuvers, the landing could occur within roughly 10 minutes after liftoff. As Elon Musk explained, the booster will need to autonomously navigate itself towards the launch tower. Two critical factors come into play here deceleration and steering. These will be managed by two systems, the grid fins and the engines. In reality, both systems performed admirably during the recent flight. There were no reported issues with the grid fins and remained intact when Booster 11 landed. Although one of the center engines failed, it did not impact the landing process. 
The deceleration from over 1,200 down to around 10 kilometers an hour in under 20 seconds was a clear testament to that. However, challenges lie ahead for SpaceX in complex maneuvers like catching the booster with a Mechazoa launch tower's arms. For Flight 5, not only will the grid fins and engines need to replicate their performance from Flight 4, but they'll also need to improve upon it. For instance, while the engines decelerated effectively, many believe the 9 km an hour speed was still too fast for an accurate landing on the catch arms. SpaceX will undoubtedly need to address the engine issue soon. One engine failed shortly after liftoff and another during landing. This could be due to excessive heat and the landing engines repeatedly igniting and shutting down. These factors can easily lead to failures, as evidenced by the recent engine issue that caused a fire when the booster was near the water's surface. Fortunately, it did not affect the other engines, but the problem needs to be resolved quickly. In summary, having all engines operational is critical for successful steering, deceleration, and a safe landing on the catch arms. Not only do the vehicles need to perform flawlessly, but the launch tower, particularly the chopstick mechanism, must also function perfectly in the upcoming flight. The chopsticks will need to open and close swiftly, precisely coordinating with the booster's movements. The timing of this action will be measured in seconds. Even the slightest delay could lead to a catastrophe. Inside the chopsticks, a crucial system called the thrust vector control will align the booster's position, helping it mate precisely with the orbital launch mount, or OLM. I, and perhaps all of us, hope that SpaceX can resolve these issues to ensure a safe landing. Our expectation is that the booster will come back on the correct trajectory towards Starbase, decelerating and steering reasonably, with the chopsticks below opening up an ideal space for the boosters to enter, then closing to catch and lower the booster. Subsequently, the thrust vector control will adjust the booster's position, and finally, the chopsticks will rotate and place the booster onto the OLM to complete the mission. However, unexpected incidents could occur in this sequence of events. According to Elon Musk, the probability of success for the upcoming attempt is only 50%. SpaceX is undoubtedly preparing for unforeseen scenarios. Evidence of this is the backup solution Elon Musk recently revealed. If the booster detects that anything's wrong, it'll suicide itself into the ocean. Um, if, if things are looking good, it'll steer over to the tower and the arms should be able to grab it. If this method is employed, the time frame before the booster approaches the launch tower will be extremely critical and closely monitored. As Elon Musk stated, they'll closely monitor the booster's condition. In my opinion, SpaceX will need to monitor both the vehicle and the launch tower. If any issues arise, the booster will turn back and intentionally ditch itself in the ocean, similar to the propulsive landing procedure in previous flights. Regarding the landing location, I believe SpaceX will aim to land as far offshore as possible to minimize the impact on people and wildlife. But let me reiterate that landing the booster using the Mechazilla catch arms remains SpaceX's ambitious plan. The current launch license does not change for these new missions. In the future, SpaceX will need to submit a launch license modification to the FAA. While confidence in successfully catching the booster with the Mechazilla arms has increased after the success of Flight 4, skepticism still surrounds this challenging endeavor. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.